در واقع در حالا Last so that you complete it yourself and that is delivery uh, care after delivery care after delivery which we call peculiar uh, and again I want to tell so many assignment has come to me Th those who are here to submit, or those who have sent through people, they, so many have come to me. I don't know the, who and who has written the assignment, but I want to rest that so many people have given it to people and it has come to me. Okay? Are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, when we say peculium, peculium is a term given after delivery. Peculium is a term given after delivery. And so the period immediately after the labor. And not just after the labor, until the reproductive organs return to the normal pre-gravity state. Remember when the woman becomes pregnant, uterus, which is pelvic organ, enters the abdomen with the baby. Uh, so many things, so many changes takes place on the woman. So when the woman delivers, all this has to come back to the normal state. That period, we call it period. You know, that period of stretching of milk, period of feeding of baby. So what we say normal period, from the day the baby is delivered, and six weeks after that, six weeks after that, so from first day to six weeks, all that period is called period. And it's a period that so many things can happen to the woman, so we need to know it. When a baby, a mother delivers a baby, we have period we call lie in period. Lie in period. It's the time during which the mother rests after going through the, uh, the uh, hashes of liver, pregnancy. We allow the mother to rest, you know, first stage, second stage, third stage, fourth stage. The woman goes to labor, so she has to rest. In that period, we call it lying period. During this period, the mother does, does not do any work. Uh, in Ghana, this is, for, we give seven days. Britain also gives three days for lying in period. And we have been told that lying in period should not be over one month. At 28 weeks, lying in period is over. When the mother and baby are discharged from the hospital, they are placed in the care of public health net. That is when we do postnatal clinic. So what it means is that lying period, ideally, the woman should be in a hospital for observation. And ideally, you have to be in a hospital for seven days. That is the lying period. But unfortunately, because of the, because of space, this time, people deliver in the morning and they are discharged in the evening. That is not the best. You have to be there for observation. 
There are changes that takes place in a woman during the period. You know, God that has quarantine that has come to the woman during pregnancy has to go away. That will retrogress. But the three, these three things are what is really observed to be a change. Evolution of uterus and other derivative organs, uterus and other things that have come to abdomen, or go back, or go back to the pelvis. During this period, the woman discharges, just after delivery, the woman discharges from uterus. And that discharge, we call it lochia. So lochia is discharge. Lactation, the mother breast becomes very big. They start producing milk. We call it lactation. And so let's see into detail what we mean by involution. After labor, all reproductive organs, ovaries, fallopian tubes, uterus, vagina, everything affected by pregnancy. If you read your pregnancy, changes in pregnancy, you understand. Go back to the pre-graduate stage, what it was before the woman became pregnant. But what normally happens is that there is what we call autolysis or self digestion or extra tissues. Don't forget, uterus has four, three layers, which is endo, mayo, and peri. But when the woman becomes pregnant, endo, change into four layers, visa layer, and the, the, uh, the, the, the four layers. Professional layer, you know, all these things. The vagina is stretch, pelvic floor stretch, perineal stretch. All of them at that time they lose their tone, so they come back to their normal tone. Now, what actually we said autolysis, what happened is that there is cross retraction of muscles. Fathers, and also there is ischemia. <laughs> Sorry. Blood supply to the tissues or organs like endometrium, all this is dies off. <laughs> Sorry. So the uterus, which has grown big, become very small. That now also reduces, come so that uh, the woman will regain herself like the way she was before. Uh, as we said, autolysis of either hormones or enzymes, the protoplasm of the fibers become dissolved, everything is destroyed, self destruction anyway. By virtue of this process, the autolysis. The uterus is able to reduce the size daily. So immediately after the labor, the fundal height is reduced to 1.5 above synthesis per base. And by the end of the line in period, it is not part of. Just like when the woman becomes pregnant, she's attending antenatal, we measure fundal height. When the woman delivers to, we measure fundal height. But this time, we expect the fundal height to reduce. That's why we have lying period. During lying period, the midwives, you know, measure the fundal height. And we expect the fundal height, the uterus to go back at a certain period of time. So as by the end of the lying period, you don't have to appeal the uterus. It means the uterus has gone back to the pelvis. Then we have lochia. This is a discharge from genital tracts after delivery. Every woman who delivers or who has abortion after the baby has come, placenta has come, it will still be discharging things that are left behind. 
And this look here we call as an alkaline reaction. It has an alkaline reaction. And it's, it, it, the sense is unpleasant, but not offensive. This look here is divided into three. Look here, rubra, look here, serosa, and look here, abba. What are the look here? This look here, the discharge coming from the woman after delivery. It's divided into three rubra, serosa, and abba. Let's see them. What are they? Rubra is the red color. Just after delivery, you don't expect to see something apart from blood discharge. One to four days, it should complete, it should change, the blood should stop coming. The color is red, as we said, blood is inside, fragrant of chorion, lycoamanine, dago, venice cassiosa, epithelion, and enzymes. And sometimes we go on from the baby, as the baby is coming, it passes some stools. We call it rubra. Four days is complete. Then you move on to serosa. It's five to nine days. And this one's midwives or nurses have to be checking. This is pink in color. And this child between the fifth day to nine days. What is the loca? The locia now has less blood and more serum, rest serum. Leukocytes and from the placenta side. So it's pink. When you remove the part under the woman, you see that the shark is said coming, but this time it's not red. We call it serosa. Then finally, you get to look here, Abba. From 10 to 15 days, two weeks after delivery, there shouldn't be any blood. This time, when the woman show you a spot, you see that you don't see anything, you don't see any color. The color creamy contain organisms, because an end product of healing process in the uterus and vagina. So that is the, 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 the we, are, we are being asked to note, we are being asked to note, the quantity that is coming, the color of the lochia and order of the lochia are very important when you are nursing such women. An increased amount of lochia lost and, the, and in the blood content may, seem when, may be seen when the mother becomes more active. It is not advisable after the woman has delivered, she becomes sedentary. When she's moving around, I mean, when she's moving around in her own environment, not going to town, going to market, no? The one more fluid is coming. It's good for her. Scanty look here may suggest that she has got infection. The presence of small blood clots may be normal during the first 24 hours. Remember, that is a period of local rubra, especially in multipara. But if this continues and is accompanied by pain, it suggests that product of conception may not have been fully expelled. When the woman is bringing blood after delivery, you know, that look here, uh, but you should not bring blood with, with pain. If she has pain, what it means is that she still have a product of conception after delivery of placenta and membranes there, which is causing the severe contraction of the uterus. So the, the normal thing is that the woman should what? It's child blood, but in a comfortable situation. That doesn't mean that the woman will not experience something, but if the pains are just too much for her, then it means there's something wrong. Not all the product has been discharged. 
when lockia is offensive, it may, it may indicate the vulva is not properly clean and there's contamination by fecal debris. Don't forget, sometimes when some women are delivering because of the proximity between the uterus and vagina to that of the rectum, they pass tools. And this will infect the, the, the vulva and also affect the lochia coming. But if they, what the, uh, what do we call it? Vulva hygiene is good. Then you should think of infection. When the woman, the lochia is discharged and the woman is seriously calling you to, in, see, to tell you that the discharge coming is not good at all, it's very offensive, then you should think of infection and something has to be done immediately. So that is lochia, you know, lochia alba, lochia serosa, and lochia, uh, well, <clears throat> Sorosa, Abba, and others. So apart from this Lokia issue, the next changes that we look at is the four, during pregnancy, estrogen and progesterone is high in the blood of the woman. Now that the pregnancy is gone, these two hormones were supporting the pregnancy. Now that the pregnancy is gone, estrogen and progesterone has to also go away. Normal blood volume is considerably increased. Don't forget that when a woman is pregnant, the blood volume increases. We call it homo dilution. A lot of fluid goes into the blood. Progesterone, you know, acts on smooth muscles and reduce excitability and increase vascularity. When it falls, progesterone allows its effect upon the smooth muscles fibers. So they have constipation, so many changes that takes place, heart burns. So this, when progesterone is falling, all these muscles recover. It recover to normal muscle tone in these areas and in the ligament of the uterus. So the effect of the progesterone diminishes after delivery of the placenta. But many women remain prone to urinary tract infection. Remember, when progesterone effect is on the rect uh, ureters, blood uh, urine flow becomes stagnated. So when the placenta falls, sorry, when the placenta is delivered, progesterone goes down, all these things come back to normal. So the ureters become very active in normal and discharge urine the way it is. During pregnancy, the normal blood volume increase accommodate increased blood flow needed by the placenta and uterine white vessels. So we draw estrogen allows diuresis more after delivery. You see the woman urinating more after delivery. It's because now the hemodilution increase the volume of the blood. The excess fluid that has gone into the blood is now going off because of the reduction in the flow of hormone, estrogen, and progesterone. During this time, mothers pass copious amount of So you should not be surprised after delivery, woman passes a lot of urine. Don't be surprised because changes are taking place in her blood. Right now, action is increased in the early part of the period because of reduction of blood volume and the excretion of waste products and waste products from autolysis. 
The peak of this activity occurred within seven days of the period, that's the lying period. So you see, ideally when women deliver, we should not decide them quickly and then send them home. They have to be with us in a maternity home on admission in a line with their children that will survive their activity with all these changes. <coughs> Another change that comes after delivery is lactation. The woman this time, the breast becomes very huge, become fully matured, and start to secrete a milk we call cholesterol from the second day and third day. And this is possible because as progesterone is going down, estrogen is going down, another hormone we call prolactin is now going up and circulating. And prolactin goes to the breast and affects milk production in the breast. <laughs> So the breasts begin to excrete a lot of milk. The blood supply to the breast also increase. When a woman is delivered, especially fair woman, when you look at the breast, you see blood vessels running through the through the breasts. You the blood has to send nutrients and fluid to the Aviolar cells on the breast so that they can manufacture milk for the baby. So this may give to engorgement. The, the mother's breast will become very heavy, very, very heavy. And sometimes a little pain in it. And the milk starts flowing after four days. But since they all, but the period of lying in the breast. Sister, I push the mute your microphone. And active with the milk flowing out easily. The slight engorgement. This engorgement, we call it physiological engorgement. I know most of you have seen, and some of you have experienced this after delivery. You have a lot, a lot, a lot of women having big breasts. So when you don't continue breastfeeding your baby, this physiological engorgement can change to pathological engorgement. And that's why you need medical attention. So how do you manage women in the period? We have seen changes, but how do we manage them in the period? We manage them careful of the vision of the changes during the period and giving immediate treatment if any abnormality arises. So we need to observe them and manage them as and when the changes are taking place. This is the aim of the period, management in period, to promote maternal infant health to promote breastfeeding for the baby. After delivery, we need to establish emotional well-being of the mother. And we also have to promote involution. That the uterus has to go back. If the uterus doesn't go back, we say stop involution. That is also a problem. And of course, we have to prevent infections. So for the principles involved in management of the period, we look at the total hygiene of the mother who are delivered and the child should be taken care of. There should be special care for perineum. Don't forget the perineum is between the anus and vaginal orifice, that area. You have to care for it, especially those who have a cat too. You don't have a cat. Sometimes the midwife will ask you where you go. Please, some sit on some small warm water. 
so that uh, that place you come meet. We'll swap the bomb after delivery. You have to clean the area. And you encourage the patient to have a hot sit bath for the rest of the days. The bowels and bladder is very, very important. You ask the woman whether she has attended the call she has. Ask urine. Because sometimes after delivery, the Sister Rosa, don't go. The, the, the woman find it difficult to, to excrete, to pass urine because of pain, some bruising the person has gotten as a result of delivery. Now you do special observation, TPR, don't forget. These observations and all those things that we are talking now, they are the fourth stage of labor. And they all occur within what? Lying period. The blood pressure should be checked, especially if it was raised during pregnancy. After delivery, you have to check the blood pressure. The diet should be balanced. You should eat well. Adequate rest. Let the woman rest. Let the woman sleep. So any ambulation, let the woman also walk about. Any ambulation is very, very important. It is wrong for a woman who has delivered right over the head of the husband that you know I've just delivered. Uh, let me sit on the bed and take my tea or take my cocoa or take my... No, 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 no. You should walk about. You decide, the more you work about, the uterus become active and you decide a lot of uh, fluid. If the woman has drugs prescribed for her after delivery, you make sure she had it. Now my hemoglobin should be checked. There are lots of blood and the fifth day to see if there is anemia. And this should be corrected by good diet and iron supplement. Make sure you encourage breastfeeding. Should be seriously promoted. Because it also helps in the uterus coming back to pre gravity stage. And special care should be taken of the nipples. Check the nipples. Are they correct nipples? Some mothers have correct, some mothers don't have. Some have invaginated nipples, some have cracked nipples, some have long nipples. Let's say, check whether the woman has correct nipple. Then keep on checking from the height and reading the lochia. The most importantly, do a diversional therapy for the woman. Now, so women, when they deliver, something happens in their mind. And if you don't take care, the woman may go out of herself. What we call pupura psychosis. She can become mentally, she, has, she may have mental problem. I would say she come hard, but she will have a mental problem. She will go for well, especially Extremely gravity, she will be overwhelmed with the situation she finds herself. I'm not a mother. I'm also going to wash napkins. I'm going to do this. Wow, this is a big problem. So you do a diversional therapy. Especially when she's on her bed, quiet, looking, staring at things. So you make sure you go to her and advise her. The rules of sepsis, a sepsis should be observed and maintained. Teacher, in Nepal, that will fall on the ground, should not go back to where it's coming from, to the, the vulva. Otherwise, you get infected. The attitude and relationship of the nurse, of static nurse, goes a long way to make the patient feel comfortable. And relax at the hospital. 
don't go to the patient. Hey, you have delivered eh? by delivering, it's not easy. When you do that as a nurse, then you are scaring the mother. Be a good friend to a newly born, a, 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 a lactating mother, a newly born mother and her baby. So that is the care. The woman will give you some complaints. And those complaints, don't take them for a joke. Try to help the baby mother. We call them minor disorders of pupillion. Don't forget pupillion is the day, the very day the baby is delivered, placenta is delivered, third stage is gone up to six weeks. Any complaint that comes from the mother should be taken seriously. Some, most women experience some form of discomfort during the period state as a result of some changes I told you is taking place in her. Manual disorders, one of them is after pains, after pains. No woman delivers and she hasn't got pains, uh, waist pain. The interesting part of it is that sometimes you realize that the mothers can't even stretch themselves after they are delivered because of the waist pain. It's a minor disorder because of the continued contraction of the uterus which is gradually coming into the pelvis. So it gives a pain. The idea of the uterus continues to contract it to expel anything that is left in the uterus. The uterus should be free and they occur more frequently in multipara than in prim primipara. These things are quite often felt during breastfeeding. Sometimes when a woman is breastfeeding, she calls you, Auntie Ness, please come. I put my baby on the breast and my waist is paining me. That is a good sign of uterine contractions. And when the uterus is contracting very well, it will prevent what? Bleeding. So any blood clots will be expelled a man will give an artist. But if the contractions are very severe, then it means the uterus has to be explored. Then we see whether there's something there. Or we give what we call egometrin or symptom to contract the uterus so that the extra blood will be removed. Another manner disorder that can occur to a woman after delivery are hemorrhoids. You know, these hemorrhoids are also manner disorder when a woman is pregnant. Severe pain around the anus because of the hemorrhoids. They may appear for the first time during delivery. Somebody may not get hemorrhoid in pregnancy, but it can occur in labor as a result of straining during the second stage. And it may make the varicose veins around the rectum collapse. What do we do? We give an adjacent suppository for recession, and the anosol to is given. You can give ice compresses, may be given to reduce the pain. Magnesium sulfate dressing may be applied to reduce the edema, bleeding from any, from, from very painful hemorrhoids, they have to be removed by surgery. If the hemorrhoids are severe, then they have to do surgery for the woman. Then it seems to be a minor disorder. So minor disorders, midwives and doctors on the world can just give you all this is and then you are okay. Retention of urine because of pain, bruises in the urethra, and badandri labor. 
it gives the woman pain when she's urinating after delivery. So if after delivery a woman is complaining of pain during urination, very, very normal. Sometimes to damage to the bladder may cause lack of tone, and this may also lead to urine retention. There are two issues here. Urine retention may come from the mother herself. Because when she is urinating, she gets the pain, she will, she will not she stop it. Or oh, there will be a damage to the bladder if proper delivery method is not adapted. So sometimes to the dosa position of the mother may not allow her oh, to it. It. So this for yeah, management will depend upon the cause of the retention of urine. Adam would say. She'll be adapted to let the patient pass urine. Sometimes they do catheterization, they pass catheter so that they take the urine out of the woman's bladder. Another one is backache. After delivery, the woman will complain of backache. And because of sacroiliac straining, don't forget the sacroiliac joint. The sacroiliac joint straining probably will cause a stretching of the ligament. <laughs> it may also be due to retroverted uterus. And it, sometimes it may be due to prolapse of uterus. Low grade pelvic <laughs> infection or chronic urine tra tra uh, traction or cervical erosion. When a woman complains, please refer the patient to the, a doctor for necessary examination or call a doctor's attention because the causes are many so that it may not be just. Uh, first one. The uh, and they will give analgesics. You know, so that wow. it will prevent the <laughs> now, <laughs> now, <laughs> this is a painful <laughs> contraction. Those who are aware, Adam will send you to your microphone. Oh, please, 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 please. Then another minor disorder cramps after delivery, the woman still pains in the calf muscles. It is, the, it is thought to be due to during labor, which causes loss of salt from the body. And to whom she could find. Adam will say, keep quiet, or keep quiet. Ah. The management here is the foot of the bear should be, uh, the foot should be flexed several times and calf muscle massage. Oh, so you go. For what? Temporary relief. Sometimes when the woman delivered, there will be some scratches here and there on perineum. That's why they advise the woman to. And the perineum, either some scratches or they will be due to episiotomy. If there is pain, you just give uh, analgesics and that will be. We have another minor disorder we call paresia, paraparesia. After delivery, you have the woman running temperature, and the following may be the cause, either infection of, of the genital tract, or infection of breast <laughs> breast, or urinary tract infection, or respiratory tract infection. Oh, this right. four, four points here can cause temperature right. going up. Okay. There will be a light breast. We have just said that. Third to fifth day after the period, the breast will become tense and heavy and painful. This, if the condition is more severe and tension is very great in the breast, you know, the, is not, the breast is not really, Thank you. the cells will become damaged and cease to produce. So something has to be done. 
In large breast sense, the patient may complain of pain in the breast, slight temperature, breast may appear with dematose and tender. Cholesterol should be expressed. You help the mother to express the milk from the breast. Later, this will facilitate the milk flow freely. So that when the milk flows and the baby starts taking the milk, the, this pain will go. But the curative here is that mother should be supervised during feeding as she may find difficulty will be because of the size of the nipple. Very gentle expression of milk should be done. Breast should be massaged gently using a little olive oil or water. The mother should be given a firm breast support, such as well supporting brassia, broad trappings of bandage. So that is the curative measures that will take place. Then uh, the doctor may order some drugs. The drugs we have here, the drugs we have here are different. They may be different from, from facility to another facility. <laughs> but if the, the tension in the breast is heavy, then some drugs are to be to you at especially when the woman abort a baby or she has still that baby she will still have to go through the period and for that because there's no baby to feed on the breast something has to be done to reduce the the the, the to reduce the the what we call it the size of the breast if the engagement is severe the baby should not be put onto the breast because of the risk of damaging the nipples. For that one, we use breast pump to pick breast and milk from the breast and feed the baby. So that is the disorders. Any, any question? Hello. Hi, sir. All right, so let's move on to postnatal clinic. Postnatal clinic. When the woman delivered, she has to go to the postnatal clinic. Very important. And it's the duty of the nurse to advise the mother to attend postnatal clinic after delivery. So that they will do postnatal examination. This examination is normally done even, even when the woman is on the ward. They start from the hospital, which is on the six or seven day after what? In lying period. The purpose of this postnatal is to increase maternal morbidity by diagnosing and treating minor conditions we just talked about, which have occurred as a result of childbirth, such as, such as cervical erosion and utriverted uterus. The first postnatal visit, postnatal examination is done within the first and second week when the patient is on the ward. During the first visit, the nurse ensures that the mother has fully recovered from the stress and strains of what? The childbirth. And that lactation is fully established. Then don't let any woman leave and go home without talking to her about family planning. We are not forcing her to do family planning, but we have to give her education on family planning. And then we examine her for signs of any problem with the cervix and breasts. 
So you do a general examination. You take a temperature and pulse, blood pressure readings, urine analysis, hemoglobin estimation. You look at the breast. Don't forget she's going to use the breast to, 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 to feed the baby. This, you, you, you inspect the breast. Breast is very, very important. After delivery, you have to inspect, make sure that the woman has normal breast to breastfeed. If there's any problem, tell her what she's supposed to what she's supposed to do. You also inspect the tone of the uterus, abdomen, whether the muscles are returned and the normal tone or not. You pay the uterus and check whether it has come yes. back. Then you check you 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 palpate the pelvis. I mean the pelvic yes. area of of the of the of the woman. And what you expect examine the because of the look here we talk about. What type of lochia is coming and what period is this lochia coming? Because we have three different Robra, Serosa, and Abba. Also check who's meta, check whether it is short and if given as healed. Check the condition of vagina and cervix. If any abnormality is detected, appropriate treatment is given. The patient is advised during postnatal on diet, especially iron diet, if there is sign of anemia. Then you give an appointment for the next postnatal visit. The second postnatal visit is during six weeks after a period. When almost you expect that all organs have returned to their normal position and sizes, it's conducted along the same line as the first postnatal visit. What do you mean by that? Both mother and the baby are examined and see whether there's something wrong with them. And the general examination for the second home visit is that. It includes blood pressure, blood estimation, as well as urine analysis. With the breast, inquire about lactation, whether she is producing milk well when she comes for the second time. That advice should be given. Again, pelvic examination is done. You look at lustration and episiotomy, as it heal. There, there can be vaginal discharge or hemorrhage. So hemorrhage, if the woman comes back and complains of bleeding, it may be this for uh, be the following. Either pelvic infection has taken place, or she has retained some product and send it home, or menstruation has set in again. Uh, we have chorion, what we call chorion epithelioma, that's the cancer of the chorion. Or TB, or endometriosis. These are very, very rare. But what we are trying to say, if she comes back with bleeding, the cause of bleeding should be investigated and treated. Non hemorrhage vaginal discharge may be due to. Infection by trachomonas and monella. The patient should be put on bed or couch in a dorsal position with the knees bent and apart. And then you ask her to strain like she's going to deliver. And look for, observe any sign of what we call stress incontinence or prolapse. 
or any discharge coming from the vagina wall. The cervix is examined. You use peculoray, the vagina wall, and look at the cervix. See whether the cervix is closed or not. There is, see whether there is any cervical erosion or there is any cervicitis. The size and position of the uterus should also be determined in most cases. And should be found if there is antiverted or antiflex, which is the normal position. Don't forget the uterus anatomy is antiverted and antiflex. Is it in that position? The presence of any swollen and tenderness in pelvis should be looked for. Any abnormality detected should be treated accordingly. Maternal conditions, is there any backache? Don't forget to show that as minor disorder. In a, in a painful urination. And is the urination frequent? Don't forget when the changes are taking place, there will be frequency of urination. But she has gone home and come back. Yeah. Is this urination still frequent? Is she still complaining of pain during urination? Investigate this and give treatment. If there is cervical erosion, it's usually found by speculum examination. You, put in, you, you open up the vagina and you see the external os. And then you see whether the place is red. Treatment should be given. The ancient violet can be used. If there's a bleeding on, then they can use what we call electric or cauterization. Then you apply it what we call sulfanamide powder on the sub eroded, ero eroded part of the cervix. When you finish the matter, you also examine the baby. Don't forget we are talking of postnatal examination. You also examine the baby, with the baby. Hello? Otherwise, the mother comes with the baby. It comes with the baby to the postnatal clinic. You weigh the baby, the skin and the mucosa should be examined. Examine whether when the mother went to home, there is jaundice in the eyes of the baby. And it's a persistent. Check whether the baby is feeding well. The mouth should be examined for trash. When there is see some quiet things in the mouth, and the white thing can be milk cut or, or trash. If you want to know that it's trash, you try to remove it. And it will, it will, if it is milk cut, it will come out. But if it's trash, it will not. Find out from the mother whether there's any problem in feeding. As for the color and the nature of the stool and urine, Look out for the baby's general appearance. Is the baby doing well? She progressing. Any problem on the baby? Then we normally ask to do some small exercise to the mother. We call postnatal exercise and ambulation. The woman who has come, we ask her to come and do some small exercise. This is not a perfect exercise. We call them postnatal exercise. Normally, it begins as soon as possible and continues throughout the period. These exercises are taught to the period woman to help her regain her shape after childbirth. The exercise should be simple and not involve a lot in exhaustion. Or to frighten the mother. The patient should be given time to rest after she has gone through the labor. It's the best way to start with the to start with the easiest one. 
And therefore, I'm going to describe the exercises that we do to the mother after delivery. The patient lies her back with one pillow. The bladder is emptied. And this exercise to improve venous circulation and prevent thrombo, uh, thrombophilobitis. To stimulate the, exercise, the importance of this exercise is to improve so that there will not, there will not be any clots because she has been at one place in her blood vessels, stimulate circulation to restore the tone of abdominal muscles to increase blood supply to the breasts, to strengthen ligaments, and to promote the posture. Sometimes, when the mothers deliver, some of them even stop delivering because they, they, they feel that their shape will change. So we do this exercise for them. We call them the uh, post-meta exercises. So method of exercises we have given you what we, we aim at when we are exercising post woman. So for to aid evolution, this is what we do or to strengthen abdominal muscles the head of the mother is raised while she's lying. You raise her head with the chin on the chest and the abdominal muscles thrown in and, and held in the position. When the woman is lying dorsally, she stretches her legs, the hands at her sideways, and then you raise her head alone to touch to touch her chin, you have to touch her chin, to chest, the chin to touch her chest. You see that the abdominal muscle become very hard. You do that five seconds, three times, you are strengthening the abdominal muscles. Then you let a deep breath a breathe deeply should be taking, making the abdomen blow up during expiration and draw them down during expiration. This exercise, I just described for you, is aimed at causing evolution to take place fast. If you don't want blood to clot in the blood vessels of a woman who has delivered, the toes should be flexed. Whilst you lying dorsally, the toes should be flexed. You flex them, then you extend them, you flex them, they extend them. You do this time, sister, the mother. The fish should be flexed, extend, and rotated in all directions. Unfortunately, we are not seeing that so that we do the practical aspect of it. But you just imagine it. The toes, while the woman is still lying in a, on a bed, flex the toes and rotate it. On the third day, the back exercise should be performed in the following, into the following. You continue into this. You do pelvic floor, which we talk about exercises. You know, the baby has passed through the pelvic floor. It has stretched. How this is to aid speedy recovery of the whole woman. So you let the person lie on the back again with the feet crossed at the ankle and need her to imagine that she, she has an intense desire to pass through it. But the place is not suitable, so she stopped. 
and time are not convenient. She is in a meeting. Take, take it like the woman is in a meeting or she's moving with an opposite sex, she wants to urinate. And the time is not up, so she's catching the urine back. When she does that, she should tighten her abdominal muscles and buttocks. So the muscles when tightened, she remain so for some seconds before she relaxes them. The tightness and relaxation should be done six times and it will affect the pelvic floor. Don't forget when we're doing the pelvic floor anatomy, we go, we have an sphincter, we have membranous sphincter, an sphincter control the enos, membranous sphincter control the bladder, and then we have Cosidiosis muscles, which also become levator ana. So when you pretend like you want to go to to, to your needs, but you don't want to go, or attend nature's call, you don't want to touch them and help them to regain their tone. The legs sometimes to be exercised, you have straight a ways until they are at right angle to the trunk and then lower it. One leg should be exercised three times. You raise it. We are talking, we are talking about how to exercise a woman who has delivered, not a normal woman. We are talking of a woman who has delivered. You do all this into her. One leg should be exercised three times and then followed by another one. So one will be straight and one will be raised. Then the knees should be flat with the feet laid flat on the bed. The knees are then held with the hands and the trunk raised until the head touches the knee. So after raising the legs, when you finish, you hold your knees and then try to get up. The woman will try to get up until her chin touches the knees. While it is done with one leg, the opposite hand holds the flex knee. And you see that the woman will feel some tightness you know, in their legs. We have another exercise that promotes lactation. Patients should sit up in bed, touch an axilla with their hand. So you sit up in bed, you touch your axilla. I believe you all know with one hand, one elbow is moved in opposite direction. When you touch your axilla, you move the elbow in opposite, in a circular form. Once you are moving your elbow in a circular press at that point, that area will be stimulated to produce more milk. This increases circulation in the breast and help in lactation of the mother. We also have exercise which is called early ambulation. I always tell my students to tell their mothers or if them themselves are mothers. When you deliver, you start to do some laser trimod type of behavior and you are in bed, you are just Keep giving yourself problems. When you rest early and walk about, walk about, it makes the local to come plenty. And within a very short period, you, you are yourself. This is this is allowed the woman to get off bed early. She's allowed to sit up on chair and move about for an hour after midday. 
On the third day, she should be allowed to walk around the bed. And on the fourth day, you should go to the bathroom and toilet. Though she is allowed out of bed on the first day, her movement should be limited and increase gradually. That's a moment when they, 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 you, they deliver. They want to show that they are strong. Then they just get up and then sometimes start cooking and that sort of thing. It's not advisable to do that. So let's our mothers know. For any ambulant enthusiastic housewife and her family may think that once the woman is up and about walking, she should be able to start her household chores. And the results are that the woman does not have the necessary rest to recover, both physically and mentally, from the strain and stress of childbirth. And mothers should be given the opportunity after the injury to recover. You should recover at least the period, the seven days. You should recover fully, you know, eat well. This woman who do that have a little or no time. Most of the time, they want to recover fast and go and start their businesses. No time for leisure to pay attention to the lactation and give to a proper care for her baby. There is a danger of what? Heavy uterus weight on the relaxed ligament and vagina and pelvic floor, which can cause the uterus to prolapse when the upright position is maintained. Because the baby has passed through, because ligaments have been stretched, if pelvic floor exercise is not properly done, you know, and the mother becomes so active, it can cause problem to the uterus to prolapse. You see, the advantages are seen in the worst form among the working women, as I've said it already. We have the psychology of the period. The mental state of the woman and the woman's mind after delivery depends on whether the pregnancy was planned or not. There are some women when they deliver, and when they become pregnant, they said, therefore, this baby is an unwanted baby or wanted pregnancy. I want to advise that don't take it kindly when the woman made that comment whilst you are present. Every pregnancy should be wanted. No woman gets pregnant, she doesn't know what she was going to go, she was going to do to get her to become pregnant. If you are in an active period of menstruation and you know very well that when you menstruate, there's likelihood of getting pregnant. Anytime you get pregnant, it's not an unwanted pregnancy because it affects the psychology of the woman after delivery. On the whole, most are contented and happy. Most women, every woman who are delivered, Unless the woman has psychological problem at home, she lacks the pregnancy. Unless be on the lookout and see this woman we are nursing, whether she likes the pregnancy, the baby or not, and it start from the pregnancy. So in anxious and apprehensive woman, please cause her to be identified and treated. Otherwise, the woman will go crazy. This, let my word, crazy, she'll get mad and we call it the furious psychosis. The weep, women who are apprehensive and anxious weep when they are holding their babies. We call it blues. The blues will catch up. When you see a woman who has delivered and she's sharing tears, Please, don't say that, what is happening to this woman? Ah, now, Wuna, you have delivered and you are crying. 
Yeah, she's crying because she has a problem. Go to her, find out, and treat accordingly. With the, she will maybe somehow overwhelmed with extra demand that she thinks she has. She she she's going to have because of the new baby. So this is where a midwife or a nurse has to get involved and better sell if the husband can be brought to bed so that she help the woman. The midwife's sympathetic understanding and support is very appreciated by such women. Don't, don't go and tell the woman, aha, uh -huh. do you think getting pregnant and delivery is easy? That is not your business. That is not your business. She has gotten pregnant anyway, whether it is easy or not. But what is happening to her is what you have to diagnose and treat, not for her to get pregnant. Don't forget, pregnancy and labor has overtaxed the woman's energy. And nervous breakdown, particularly if the woman and the family has not been adequately prepared for the expectations. It can easily happen. So what it means is that if antenatal care was not properly done, labor was not properly managed, the woman will break down. And that is where we have to come in. After delivery, if it's your hospital and you are nursing in a postnatal ward, we have to intervene. Otherwise, the woman will break down. So that is the end for the lecture for pregnancy, labor, and period. Where did we end in anatomy? We end everything where do we in the baby. We end everything there. Can you bring me to light, even though we are closer to four o'clock? Hello. Uh, hello. Hi. 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 Do, do you have any question? Otherwise. Um, we are supposed to have gone to antipartum hemorrhage and postpartum hemorrhage, but the semester doesn't allow. Hi. So you read on your own, or they say what we call eclampsia, preeclampsia, and uh, what we call postpartum hemorrhage. Read on your own. The examination will cover every part of what the curriculum said we should do. So that is the message I want to leave you with. Friday, your, your semester will end. It, it means Saturday we can be here. Any concern? Hello, are you there? Oh, yes, yes, sir. Sir. yes, we are there. there. <laughs> I, I don't want to leave you when you have concern because from sir. here we are going to write the end of semester exams. Sir, please, how is the examination going to be the form of the examination? Is it MCQs or A and B? I've given MCQ and one AC. Uh, they haven't stopped the essay yet. I don't know whether that they stop the essay do that they mark the only MCQ. So when you see only MCQ, that's fine. If you see Recording MCQ and, and essay, that's also fine. Anything that you see in your exams is something that we have taught. <laughs> so there'll be no problem at all. Um <laughs> <laughs> Is that we going to label anything? What do you mean by label? No, <laughs> we are not labeling anything. Uh, 
But you see, let me comment on something. I was shocked. Are you there? Yes, doctor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I, I was shocked to see people exporting online diagrams to your mid-semester exams. I, 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 I don't know how they managed to do that and why they did that. But I sure those who did that have been subtracted any marks from their mid semester results. <laughs> but I was very, very shocked. And some people had time to type. And I just, I, I was shocked on that tree. Why, why do you do that? So that is, and within that state of time, I wonder how they managed to do that. Anyway, this one too, as I said, there will be a postnatal and the an essay, but like that essay, I don't know whether it's a dog. I'm not going to check again. But I don't think that one you are going to draw. So I wish you all the best. Uh, it's nice talking to people you don't see. You know. <laughs> Uh, online, online vector is talking to, it's like talking to ghosts with the section of few yeah. that, uh, the section of the commercial campus before the few ones I've seen. The rest I don't see, but you are still our students. We, we appreciate you. Please read, read well and then pass the exam. Yes, doctor. To, okay, sir. To, to mark to mark this paper sometime for us is not very comfortable. But if you give us opportunity, we'll mark a recipe paper for you. So all the best. Sir, thank you, you, sir. Uh, so we also appreciate you. Now post uh, letter uh, essay or want to get clear. Pardon? No, pardon? You may yeah, you may mention that um, the essay will be on post or something, something. I, like. I didn't mention that. Hey. Did I mention that? <laughs> <laughs> so what do you know? <laughs> no, you Did didn't. I that? No, sir. No, you no, didn't. Sir, you didn't. No, you sir. Did. no, sir. I didn't mention that for you to see a question and you said I received you. I didn't say that. Please let me let me repeat. I didn't give you any any clue that my question that is the one who come from. What I was saying is that they have sent your question for moderation and they haven't brought it back. If the investor would like, we may like me to drop the essay fine. But if you see essay and objective, that are my questions. If we essay yeah. the objective, a, a multiple choice questions alone, that's fine. I didn't pinpoint that the essay will come from this area. I don't do that in my exams. Otherwise, I'm not examining you. You have to read everything and pass. That make me make me comfortable that all the areas I've touched, you have understood it. Uh, you have learned. So thank you very much. Master, who said that? I'm, I didn't say that. Please. Okay, uh, please. Sir. Uh, yes, sir. You gave us some reading assignments. Can you please come again with it? Which reading assignment? Yeah, you said that we are to read some other part because everything the exam will cover everything, please. Uh, but but I assure you that those areas that I've just mentioned would not be in that one. I'm I, I'm assured, I'm sure, I assure you for okay. that. The All right, thank you. Post, postpartum hemorrhage, uh, eclampsia, and pre eclampsia. I don't think my questions are part of it, but you should right, know sir. if you go there and it is there, then you answer. Yeah, so that is that. Yeah. All right. So okay, all sir. the best. <laughs> bye bye. Hello. Bye. 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 If you go there and meet any question, answer it. Hello, sir. I wanted, Hello, to, I wanted to take the man to tell us <laughs> this, but he refused. Goodbye, sir.
Yeah, I'll call it that. Yeah, right. Men are bad, men are bad.